Hi, welcome to Life Unraveled, where we unravel life's little mysteries. Today we're talking about music and rhythm and how that can help us read. Now you might think, how does music help us read? Well, it has a really, really big component of our reading. Think about it. When we sing nursery rhymes to our children, for instance, Five little ducks went out one day Over the hills and far away Mother duck said, quack, quack, quack quack but only four little ducks came back one two three four so we've had music we've got language so the five little ducks went out all the words that we use as our language we have numeracy so our five little ducks and then there were four ducks and three ducks and two ducks etc so we're using math skills we're using literacy skills and to pull it all together, we have, a, have it in a song and we have beautiful song um, and music. So what you'll find is that a lot of the nursery rhymes that we sing all have numbers and animals and times and days that, it, that we use every day and the language that we use every day. So it's really important that we do sing these songs to our kids and that we incorporate music into our lives. Now whenever we're on the whenever you're driving around and you have the radio on, you've got music happening. And it has been researched that when you listen to music, whether that's orchestral or singing or pop music or whatever music it is, it actually activates more parts of the brain than when you are listening to just reading or you are um, just doing maths sort of sums. So it's really important that when we have our children as little tiny babies that we sing these nursery rhymes and we have that rhythm and rhyme. And even when you speak, you have a rhythm and a rhyme to your voice. So how actually does music and rhyme help us? Well, language has common skills. Our language, our maths and our music all have common skills and common aptitudes. And we've gone through that before and we know that those common aptitudes all help each other and they sort of support each other. An environment that's rich in language and rich in music, rich in numbers will actually produce a child that has a really good opportunity to do well in their academic and their education. There's been lots and lots of research done and children who learn Instruments, for instance, do much better academically than children who don't. There's also a heap of research that is children that know their nursery rhymes do better academically later on than those children who don't. So an environment that's rich in music and rich in the concepts and skills that are required for these nursery rhymes and these early learning songs really promotes music literacy, but it also promotes literacy and numeracy so how can we help getting our kids into music? Well, it's actually really easy. Number one, you can sing songs. And that's pretty easy to do. Nursery rhymes are, are fairly simple to learn. They only use a few notes and they're all over the place. You can get heaps of CDs on them. I've got a few videos that I sing the nursery rhymes for you. There's a couple of books that are really good that have nursery rhymes in them. You can even just read the nursery rhymes at in initially and what you'll find is that you'll get into that rhythm. So let's look at one of the songs that we can sing. For instance, Mr Frog jumped out of his pond one day and found himself in the rain. Said he, I'll get wet and I might catch a cold. Ah, 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 choo! So he jumped in the pond again. The kids love this song, it's so good. So if you want to start to keep a beat, that's one of the important parts of music, is to get this beat. And it also helps with reading. Mr Frog jumped out of his pond one day and found himself in the rain. Said he, I'll get wet and I might catch a cold. Ah, 
Ah, ah, choo! So he jumped in the pond again. So you can see that I've clapped that beat. But you can tap your beat on the back of your child. You can tap it on your knees. They can tap it on their knees. They can tap it on your fingers. Or you can tap together with your hands. And it's just getting them used to feeling the rhythm of the music and the beat of the music. Now another thing that you can do is using dynamics, loud and soft. So let's sing this piano, piano soft, ready? Mr. Fox jumped out of his pond one day and found himself in the rain. Forte said he, I'll get wet and I might catch a cold. Ah, 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 choo! Piano. So he jumped in the pond again. So you can see how I've added in louds and softs and I use the musical terms for those. Piano is soft and forte is loud. And you can, you can do that and have fun with the songs. And that also means that when you're in the car and the kids are really, really, really loud and you're saying inside voice and they're going, but we're outside, you could say piano. So they then get to, or soft voice, so they then get to understand the difference between the different, the loud and soft. And that loud and soft really helps with their reading because when they start to read and they read out aloud, you don't want them to sound like this and not be very interesting because that's all that they do. You actually want them to be able to move their voice up and have their voice down or go really loud or go really quiet. So the more that you can do that in music when they're little and the more understanding that they have of those concepts really helps them with their reading. And the last part that you really want to have them to understand is the melody and harmonies. So the melody is the song that you actually sing and the harmonies are those parts that sit above it that are playing different notes but sound really nice. And the best way to hear these harmonies is through classical music. And even though you don't have a literacy or a numeracy component to these sorts of songs, the composition of them is very mathematical and you find a lot of kids that love classical music and that play classical music are very, very good with their maths simply because of the way that it's composed together. Now, I don't know about you, but I find that when I hear music, I just can't stop moving. And I love the action songs and I love doing a singing the songs out loud and walking around and, and what I found is that singing just doesn't have you don't just sing you always are doing things so there's a great physical development part of your of singing and nursery rhymes for instance Aunt Lindsay Wincy Spider has great fine motor skills crossing the midline a ship sailed from China it also looks at um, social skills and, and a whole heap of different aspects in our life. It also helps with listening skills. So the longer the song, the more listening skills that the children develop. And we start with very short songs like Mary Had a Little Lamb and Move and Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and we move up to more complex songs like The Purple People Leader. And by moving and progressing through those songs, we find that the listening skills of the kids grows longer and longer and, and that is really helpful when they're going to school. So music has much more development opportunities than just your straight saying poems and doing your number facts. The other thing I find is that music has built-in repetition. So they are learning because they say the same things again and again and again. It's easy and it's fun and you can do it anywhere. Um, you can use it as a mechanism to stop those tantrums that are starting to happen. So the music is telling them what to do, not you. And that stops that power play between parent and child. And that's really, really important when you're talking about little toddlers. It's also important when you're talking about teenagers too, but that's a whole new story. You find that the patterns of the language and the rhythm and the rhyme and the vocalisation that you use while you're singing really helps the kids with their reading later on. It means that they are more confident and they're happy to actually go out and sing and, and 
go out and even speak in front of other people. And that is a big component of education today. It's also the words and the vocalisation that gets used. It's the media and the message that comes across. There is music behind all of the ads. So it's good for the kids to develop an understanding of that and to actually hear that because often they don't hear it because they're so interested in all the images that are presented to them. So remember, music actually develops their listening skills. It develops their voice. It gives them the, a good range in their voice from low to high, loud to soft. And best of all, it's the fun way. Children learn best when it's fun. And that's what you'll find, is the more fun you have with your kids, the better they'll learn. So enjoy, have a great time. And I'm sure that you'll now be into singing all the nursery rhymes. And my kids always say to me, oh, mum, my life is like a musical. You've got a song for everything. And how wonderful is that? I hope you have fun doing that too. Thanks for listening. And I hope you learnt heaps this time. We've got more videos. Remember to go onto their website, www.lifeunravel.com.au to find more courses to learn lots about kids and all sorts of other parts of life. See you next time. Bye.